uh, thank you for coming to this conference and thank you especially for taking interest in something that sounds like uh, scrubbing toilets but on the internet. Today I will talk about web scraping with Python. I'm not sure, have you ever heard the term web scraping? <laughs> My name is Nikola Milojica and I'm currently working as the automation engineer for the Vizelio. In this uh, Swiss startup, my job is to essentially write a Python code that runs automated processes uh, and as such avoid um, losing people's time and uh, nerves. One of the jobs I do there is news aggregation, sell lead, sales lead acquisition, data structure, order placing, and uh, regression testing and functional testing. I usually write scripts, but from time to time I'll also do some, a bit of object-oriented programming. And uh, why do I use Python? Well, because it was easy, really easy to learn, and it has a lot of capabilities, and of course it's a high-level general purpose programming language. My journey with Python uh, started two years ago, when I decided to ditch uh, Visual Basic for application and AutoHotKey. Yeah. <laughs> In a way, it, I felt like growing up in my career, and that from that point, essentially, I decided to move entirely to the programming field. And uh, because I do a lot of, uh, I did two jobs uh, for like five years, so that's why I decided to start uh, automating things. Okay. So, what is the web scraping? If we consult Wikipedia org, they say that web scraping or web harvesting or web data extraction is data scraping used for extracting data from websites. It doesn't sound that, that much. And if we quote Techopedia, they say that web scraping is a term of various methods used to collect information from across the internet. Uh, web scraping is someone, uh, something that everybody uses. Even if you are a developer, you will go to the Stack Overflow from time to time and copy-paste someone else's code into your own scripts. Uh, as a term, it's growing popularity in the years. <laughs> Funny, huh? Yes. Uh, as a term, it's going up in the popularity, and a lot of companies are start providing web scraping services as their main business. So, do you know who is the biggest, uh, who is the biggest web scraper today? Anyone? Yes, Google. This transition was a bad idea. <laughs> so, what do you really need to know in order to extract data from the web pages? Obviously, because HTML essentially is the, well, is the language of the web, and for the average internet user, it's the whole internet, in a way. As you might know, X HTML is a subset of XML. It's used by your web browser to render data and uh, essentially transform the gibberish string into something that we can all relate and uh, use. And as such, uh, it's used for a web page uh, and uh, their in its components, it, its elements. So, I have here a web element. You probably already see what element it is. Every element has its tag or a type, and in this case, this is a link. We saw, okay, so we have a tag, it's a, a tag. We have a href or destination where when we click that link, uh, the web browser will take us. So we have like here target equals blank, meaning it will open uh, the web page in a new tab. Then we have a class for those who are into front-end, you will see that this is actually a bootstrap class. And after that, we have a text that link will apply to, and at the end, we'll have a close tag. Why is HTML uh, absolutely necessary to know in order to extract data? Because every single value from this can be used to point your crawler or scraper to extract data. So, what else do you need to know? Well, you need to know a bit about JavaScript, just a bit. Essentially, you need to know how to parse JSON, 
and you, you need to know how to make a web browser do some exhibition stuff like deleting the pesky elements, you know, like blank element or some shady class. And of course, you need to know the RESTful API as much as humanly possible because um, a lot of time when you're extracting data, you can use the third party services. For example, maybe your job is to extract the every email on the page. And while you're doing that, you can essentially send that email to some API that will check validity of the email and give you back the response. Can you mail this mail? Is it all valid or not? Okay, so for the first thing of this presentation, I will talk a bit about requests and beautiful soup. Uh, requests is the one of the most downloaded library uh, for Python. It's not still included in the in the library that comes with installation. And the beautiful soup essentially is a class that will help you transform the gibberish of the HTML into something that you can call and extract data from. So the request, the, pop, uh, the full name of the library is HTTP request for humans, because it's, uh, it's a lot easier than your lib or something like that. In a way, it can uh, mimic the browsers, can handle cookies, and uh, use it such a little, it's used by everyone. So it was like uh, used by Facebook, by uh, I'm not sure, but it was really, really used. So the beautiful soup is, uh, like I said, it's uh, used for building tree-like objects. Can work with multiple parsers, but the one I'm using and the uh, one that is that is the industry standard is called LXML parser. Essentially, that is a library written in C and then wrapped around with the Python. And the most important thing uh, for the beautiful soup is that you do not need to use a regular expression as that much because you can pinpoint every element on the web page pretty easy. Now, let's go to the example, hopefully. This is a simple script that will simply do, um, that will quote, uh, scrape quotes from the, as you can see, quotes torscape.com. The idea is to pass the argument that the number of pages into the script and essentially take all the uh, quotes from this site. Uh, before you do the web scraping, you must really understand how the web pages are working. And in order to traverse the web pages in the fashion that you want to execute at the moment. So I'll just type the command. And I will say, okay, like, give me four pages. Come on, come on. We have some uh, internet connection problems. But as you can see so far, okay, we are done. I went to the website and I simply indexed the quotes. I also extract the author of the quotes, quote text, and also made a list of tags that are included. If you're wondering how this looks like on a web page, it looks like this. So we have our web page here, essentially the quotes in the, their fields. I went through every single one of them and essentially get the text author and the tags. Also, once I did that, I was hitting the next page and looking to the URL. So it's going like this and essentially the script traversed the number of pages I uh, set as a parameter and take uh, every single text that was on these pages. Okay, have you heard about Selenium? Yes, do you use the Selenium? Yes, for testing, I assume. I assume, no, <laughs> for the big thing, yes, yes. Okay, so the Selenium was 
built as an automation framework that drives a web driver. If you do not know what is a web driver, the web driver is essentially binary or exe file that will input uh, the commands into a browser. It will simulate the real user interaction with the website. Uh, when I say simulating, it, I mean it means clicking, inputting text, drag and dropping, and taking a screenshots, which can, which can be exceptionally useful. Also, when you have a content uh, on a website that is heavily populated with JavaScript, you can't actually use request because uh, it's not uh, rendered, and uh, you will just uh, receive, instead of that, you receive uh, a JavaScript function. One, the one um, thing that Selenium has is the uh, is capability to use the exact path. Do you use XPath in your, no? Essentially, XPath is a XML uh, set of instruction for uh, parsing a library to come and extract specific data. It's, it's exceptional in handling the elements that do not have anything, like they only have a tag and some value, and that's it. Okay, I will now show you the example of Web scraping, just so what will be done here? Essentially, the task for this scraper was to extract data about the prices of the specific service in regards how much uh, money does it cost if you want to ship something from Bern to any part of the Swiss, and the whole idea is to essentially get this data, right here it's a price, and this data here, if you see it, it's a data about how much time will the shipping uh, take. So the first part of this scraper was to check um, essentially uh, how many places are there in Swiss. I run from 1,000 to 10,000 on the write input just to see how many places and once I aggregate the lists I started uh, comparing them to the prices I need to, to see just see the prices so this will go on and on and on and on but I will uh, I will quit it in a few seconds just to show you what it's generated so far I will kill it like this okay so essentially it made this CSV with the data. In the most left column it's the um, destination zip, destination name is the second column, third column is the price, and the last column is the column uh, for the duration of the shipping. Also I would like to show you the example that they do for the investment fund. The I will just do that, it's as simple like this. Then I'll explain what's happening. Okay, so this won't go up because uh, their web app is actually broken. Some fields need to be here done, but eventually it will uh, come to the piece of data that you want to do, so it will now try again in a loop. The whole point was just to make a scraper that will go to the website and anonymously buy an item. It will be like some cap or something. So, oh. Sorry, this is such a mess. And after you fill all the fields and everything, the whole point is to extract the order number and to store it into a database so that investment analysts could uh, actually see how uh, well the web store is performing. It was really interesting to do on this task, but unfortunately their web app is broken. So I will kill this also.
Okay, so now let's talk about serious business. We'll talk about Scrapy. If you don't know what a Scrapy is, it's essentially a framework built from scratch to help you gather data from the internet. It's built uh, on the top of Twisted, if you know what, uh, the, if you know the framework. Essentially, it's a synchronous framework for requesting. It's like requests on steroids in a way, but uh, without any need to handle some pesky errors. If you want to scrape uh, like big, big um, web directories like LinkedIn or like um, AliExpress uh, shop or something like that, essentially you will use a scrapey. Even it's uh, handling a request like a request library, you can use XPath for this. And if you want to crawl the websites that uh, use JavaScript to populate the content of the page, you can do it with a splash or you can use a selenium and uh, once you extract the data link data from the website you can simply provide scrape with that and it will start crawling uh, also another important thing is that this framework has built-in pipelines and middlewares i will talk a bit about pipeline essentially pipeline is all the transformation you need to do on your data once you extracted it, so you can, you know, you want to have everything have in uppercase, lowercase, maybe you want to, I don't know, compare some values or to see if, if the data is appropriate to put it in a database. And essentially that's it. I will now show you the example, hopefully. Nothing broke in the process. <laughs> Yeah, just let me. Okay, so this is the scrapey um, folder structure. You have a scrape example, and uh, bes below it you have another scrape example uh, folder. Inside there is another folder with the spiders. So this is something I did for the company. We had to collect baby names and uh, to travel agency data from the directories. And beside that you have items because essentially that's what you are extracting. Every piece of data that you want to save or to do something with it, it's called item. And uh, pipelines, well, like I said, it's, um, it's a process of transformation for the data. It, al it also contains uh, saving to the database and similar. And of course we have a setting file here, which actually I want to show you. robots text obey false because I don't want to follow the rules and I decided to add the download delay of one second simply the, so that server don't throw my requests uh, like um, you know it's a bot so if we go here and says crappy list If you give me the name, it will list the names of my crawlers. So let me go to the, I don't know, maybe this one. Follow me, Ishta. At um. Okay, so let them running. I will show this in a bit. So the whole idea was to essentially put the web directory into a CSV, CSV file so that management can actually decide which of these travel companies are legit and uh, appropriate partner for us. And so I decided to extract data from the, uh, essentially this is a website of the German travel agency association. So every travel agency in Germany is on this site. And essentially what I wanted to do is to extract the following data. I will stop the crawler now. I wanted to get the address so we can send the 
people in person to do it. I want to extract the email of the office, fax, name. This actually is the category so that uh, salespeople could know uh, because the company I work for, it's actually uh, doing visas for Russia, China and other Far East countries. So I wanted to help them, you know, just uh, so they can type China and see if the which companies are actually doing business with China. And below that, I decided to, yes, source, telephone number, time of the scrape, simply to put it in a database and essentially uh, to extract also the URL for their website. Okay, I'll just show you another thing. Ah, Zamalo. So, what we are also doing, the company is providing uh, invitation letters for Russia and Belarus. So we need, and those are pretty tricky because we need to have names and translate to the Russian, because that's the way the Russian do one in Russian. So my job was to extract some like 40,000 names from the online directory and put it in a CSV. So I went a, a bit further and I, they just asked for the German and English names, but I know that, we'll, that they will ask it for every single name eventually. So I decided to simply take the whole website into a CSV. So as you can see, essentially it's going through a website and it's uh, pulling data like mail, name, uh, meaning, if there is a meaning, origin, and the string of the name. And this bot actually uh, took 40,000 names and uh, because this is just a demo for the, this presentation, this bot actually had another part that uh, was abusing Yandex services to translate name on the Russian if possible. Okay, I'll stop this, hopefully, yes. Okay, so why is this important? First of all, because we are living in an information age and if your company has a lot of data, they can really start wrapping the mind around that to try to find any way to make a profit. Because data is king and queen of business. And uh, another thing is that even when you want to take data uh, on a clean way with through API, sometimes the web services do not have any API. And essentially it's your job to build an API for your web app so it can uh, grab the data. And of course, because a lot of data is public, but not structured, so data is all over the place and essentially you need to somehow structure it and put it in your database. Okay. That's all, folks. <laughs> Questions? I didn't use Bitcoin as example. So do you know how much of internet traffic is used by bots. data scrapers or bots? Yes. An estimate. There is, uh, it depends on the service you're at. Probably on Twitter there is like a prediction that 40% of whole traffic is just bots and that's it. On the other hand, you have like uh, LinkedIn scraping companies that if they can amass 21 million accounts, that means that uh, they hit uh, the server with at least 21 million requests. 
uh, a lot of web traffic is actually only bots and it will be go it will just go up and up it won't go down the companies are trying to um, when I wrote these scrapers, uh, there wasn't uh, like uh, any protection on the websites. So it was like, take everything without delay, just hammer the server with requests and get in quickly and get out as fast as possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you a lot.